Hey, I'm back. This is Chandler for Melder Production, and today I'm going to show you how you can modulate the start position in the sample module. So last time I showed you the basic sampler, but today I'll try to show you uh, something else, so how you can modulate some things, especially the start position. So let's start here. I have a sample. This is just one I used before for the vocoder. It sounds like this. This is Chandler. What's up? So it's just me saying a few things, and of course, I can move the start position here, it's very easy, but let's say if I wanted to actually move this in real time, or have it, you know, automated, or use it automated by, let's say, the modulation wheel, what I can do is go into advanced here, and you see there's lots of different things, but I want to go under sample settings and hit manual. So now, this position will allow me to scan through things in pretty much any way I want. So let's go in here and go into A and let's choose for example a modulation wheel. Okay, I'll turn the depth all the way up or actually most of the way up here. Now what this will let me do is it will allow me to scan using the mod wheel. I'll, I'll let you hear that. Okay, you can probably barely hear that. It sounds like somebody like scratching on something uh, like a DJ or something. And that can be cool, but that's not really what we want. So let's not use the mod wheel because that's a little bit inaccurate. And let's use something else. So in this case, let's use an envelope. Envelope 1 here, okay? So I'm going to turn the depth down a little bit here. The depth will determine how far it goes. Uh, but let's go into the actual envelope itself and I can do this, turn the sustain all the way up, I'm gonna turn the release off, and let's try around like a thousand milliseconds, one second. So now when I play this, it should scan through here, uh, going at a rate of one second. This is Chandler. This is Chandler. Okay. And now, as you see, if I move this up, it'll go farther, but of course that will slow the tempo down, or slow the rate down. This is Chandler. What's up? Actually... <laughs> I take that back and make it go faster. Sorry, I was wrong. So let's just have it do one here. This is Chandler. That seems pretty good. And of course I can adjust the attack speed here. This is Chandler. This is Chandler. This is Chandler. So, if I think I like that, that's good. And I can also do kind of like the opposite thing. Turn the attack to zero, turn the sustain down, and let's try the decay like this. Well, let's just... Okay, so if you want it to go backwards, you can do that. But let me move it back to where it was, like this. Decay down, sustain up. So this will just play through it, and everything's good here, but let's try some other things. So, of course, I can just have it play through this, but what if I wanted it to, let's say, play through this vocal sound here and then this other one here? So I'm going to go back into advanced, into the position. I want it to go through both, so I need to make sure it's long enough so it's hitting both of these, like this. This is Chandler. What's up? A little bit longer. This is Chandler. What's up? Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to have it skip from here to here. So every other time it will start in a different place. Let me go here again. And what I really want to do with this is I need first a constant and I'm going to add it on B. So I know this seems a little bit complicated at first, but when I add this constant here, it's going to move it all the way to the end position. And this one. So you see it's starting here, which is the end position. If I move it back, What's up? like there. So I need to find exactly where it should start. What's up? What's up? What's up? That seems pretty good. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, that's good, but how do I get it to alternate back and forth? You think, like, okay, maybe I could turn one on and off, but I don't really need to do that. An easier way is just to go to here and multiply it by flip-flop one. So I'm multiplying it, so and when it's on, it'll be this value, and when it's off, it'll go back to zero. So, you know, like A plus zero is A. Correct? So, let's hear it now. This is Chandler. What's up? This is Chandler. What's up? This is Chandler. What's up? Okay, and of course it's going a little bit too fast here, so let's go back into envelope one and just slow it down a bit. This is Chandler. What's up? 
This is Chandler. What's up? This is Chandler. What's up? This is Chandler. What's up? Okay, so now I have the speed right. But let's say if I wanted it to jump between that or I wanted to go different, slightly different speeds every time. So I can go into here and I can choose, let's say, note random, hit up and down, and let's just move this a little bit, not too much. So now each time I hit it, the attack time will be different, which will mean it will go through this sample at a different speed. This is Chandler. What's up? 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 So that's just the something that might be interesting to you. And of course you can change it in other ways. You can use other modulation sources. You could do it by, you know, what whichever key you want, if you want it to be key tracked, etc. But I know you're also thinking, hey, that takes way too long. So you're kind of right about that. So if you want to do this and you think I don't want it to take this long, just move it back to normal here. Close. And what we're gonna do is just add two of the same sample. So now I have this just talking sample. I'm gonna go in, I have this, I'm gonna add it again. Now you see here, instead of full import, I'm gonna choose import to selected region. Click okay. And everything looks the same, but if you notice here, it has now two. So here's our first one that we showed. Here is the second one. And let's move this to here. So it's starting at this point. And I could turn this down if I wanted to like that. Do the same thing here. Okay, and I'll go into advanced again, and something you notice here has different modes. So let's try manual mode. So now when I hit this, it's going to play the first one, this. This is Chandler. This is Chandler. This is Chandler. And now if I move it here, what's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? And of course, you see the modulation here. I could, you know, have it uh, changed by key scaling or the key tracking. I could have it move randomly between them, etc. But actually, if I wanted to move them randomly between, I wouldn't even use the manual mode. I'd just use like the round robin mode, which will alternate each each time. This is Chan. What's up? This is Chan. What's up? This is Chan. What's up? This is what's up? This is what's up? Yes. He's right, this is what's up. So you can do it that way. And of course, you can do more than two here. You could add a lot of them in here and just um, just alternate each time to create all sorts of interesting patterns if that's what you want to do. So uh, when you import things, sometimes it will do this type of thing for you, but this is a way you can do it manually that's really cool. And there's all sorts of other things you can modulate in here. So you can modulate the loop points, the loop end, crossfade, crossfade shape, etc. And one other thing I should probably briefly go over is this enable automation. So what this does is it allows you to automate things like this, the level, panorama, high pass filter, and low pass filter. So normally you can't even modulate those even with the MPs, but as you can see, I'll, I'll try to show you here. So if I go into generator, sampler one, sample, there's nothing there. How do I modulate those things? It's impossible. But if I go into here, enable automation for just this first one, sample one, now it will show in the generator sampler one, Let's try, is it globals? No, it's region, just talking. Now you see sample one shows up here, and also sample one, high pass filter, low pass filter uh, level, etc. And I could go in and I could adjust all the points or the curvature of those to change those using like one of these MPs, which can be hooked up to MIDI too. So there's all sorts of, you know, different possibilities. But you're wondering, hey, why don't you leave that on like all the time? Why well, isn't it on by default? And it's because it uses extra CPU. So if you don't need it, leave it off. But if you do need that and you want to, you know, modulate the panorama somehow, you can do that. So hopefully that gave you some ideas of things you can do with the sampler. And uh, there's going to be some new features coming soon. So I'll try to show those off when those come. But hopefully this gave you uh, a good look at what it can do. So if you like this, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment down below and check out all the other plugins at meldeproduction.com. Until next time, see you.